G'day worm wranglers, Marty Ware here from Marty's Garden. I've got these two worm farms you need to trade worm farms. If you've been following the videos, you know there's some really cool stuff going on. Now I'm going to go in there, I'm going to deep dive, we're going to compare the two worm farms and the feed that I've been giving. I made up like their own worm chow thing, like a dried blend. Show you how they're going for that. We'll have a look around the farm dig and then we'll do a new feed. I've got this new food that I want to try, and I think it's going to be a really exciting video. So hang around, keep on watching, it's going to be really cool. So let's open up this bad boy. See what's inside. Wow, this is going to be fun. I just got to get the camera angle right because... As soon as I open it up, they're going to bolt, and I want to show you where they've been hanging out. Um, there's quite a few near the surface when I checked earlier this morning. So the dried blend that I made is in both farms, right? And it's actually like coffee, oats, and eggshell all grounded up. And I've been feeding it this one end. If you didn't see the other video, there's going to be a link up there. Actually, there'll be a link to the whole playlist in case you're just sort of coming along later. But what we're going to do is we're going to open this up and hopefully the camera is going to zoom right in on here and get this angle and show you what's going on. If they haven't gone down already because it's getting a bit late. Fold that right back. What we're going to do is lift this cardboard edge up here and see what's happening under here. See if we can see that. Whoa. I can see a lot of, lot of little red mites all in here. Wow, this is interesting. Let us try and zoom in a bit quicker and we'll get the scoop and scoop around. But they've eaten a lot out of this end. The whole end's like caved down. So you can see they've eaten nearly all that food. Like it's, it's basically three quarters of it gone in around about five days, which is really amazing. And it's sort of caved down. It's like they've taken like the top off this area, this whole section, to get to this food source. Now, I believe there's still going to be some down under here. So I'm going to flip this up and we're just going to have a look. Now, there is not as many worms in this side as there is over the other side into the blue farm. But I'll grab the scoop and then we'll get in there and we'll have a dig around. I'll just lift up this food source first. And yep, they're there. They're there feeding on it. Which is really cool. Really happy about that. I'll just try and get in a nice shot for you. Bit of avocado peel left there. And I'll sort of blend that food through because what I'm going to do is, is just feeding that. Now, there isn't a huge amount of worms in this thing, but I'm quite surprised that they've just really gone hard in eating this area. So I'm going to change the camera angle so we can get a better shot as I turn this over. So I'm not too worried about the mites that were in there before, but... I am worried about the health of the worms because one of the main reasons why I'm feeding this type of worm chow is because I want them to get a high protein feed and then I want them to start laying a lot of cocoons. And so we're going to be working on this bedding to really improve on the worm to cocoon ratio over time. The whole idea is to get them as healthy and as happy as possible. And really, like this one's not even mature. So, interesting to see. Now, if we just come into the middle more here, away from the feeding zone, we can look here. You can see that's like, it's a nearly finished material. And these worms need to get a lot bigger in here before they'll start breeding and mating and laying cocoons. So, I got these out of the compost tumbler. And it could just be that there isn't enough. Oh, look, there's one that's got a cotelum on it. And so that one will be okay. So there will be some breeders in here, and I think we can work on that uh, over time. I will need to feed this farm uh, a lot better 
and we'll dig up the far end, away from the far end, where there is no food at all. So let's have a dig around in here, see what we can see. Yeah, they've all gone up to that feeding zone. So it really did work. Like I said before, this bedding is almost ready to be harvested. And um, one of the reasons why I've got it like this as well is I want it to be able to be really siftable to get the cocoons out of it. So what I think I need to do for this farm is I need to get more mature worms in here. I need to go hunt some down and get them in here to start breeding and laying cocoons. There's enough in here and it will work, but I don't know if it'll be as fast as I could. Now, you can see there's a lot of these. I'm pretty sure these are little like capsicums just coming up here and not tomatoes, it's like the little capsicums. And you can see when your material is like really healthy and really ready to go, how well those little shoots come up in there. Now, they haven't eaten through all of this, obviously. There's still, you can still see lots of brown bits and eggshell and different stuff in here. But I'm super happy with it. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna to move to the next farm, next here. And we're going to have a look around in that whole different type of bedding. And we're going to then obviously check how much food they've eaten compared to this one. Because there's a lot more worms than the other farm. And then we'll feed both of the farms with the new food mix that I've got. I really want to try this mix. So this is the very first worm farm of the series. Yep, this is the blue worm farm. Now this had the super bedding in it. Well, I call it super bedding. It had egg carton cardboard that had been cured. It also had aged cow manure and old recycled cocoa fiber that had old plants roots and things to it. So a lot of food already in here. And if you're watching the previous video, you would have seen that they didn't come for the avocado. They didn't come for the baited area after about even four days. They were just hooking into the cow manure, I reckon. But once they got a bit bored of the cow manure and eaten a fair bit of it, I think they've moved up here into this feeding zone where we've put the coffee, right? So grounded up coffee, as grounded as I could, could do it. Also, the dried oats, grounded that right up with a little bit of eggshell. So we're going to fold it back, and we're going to reveal in here and have a dig around and see how much they ate. Did they move up to it? Let's find out. So the big reveal, we'll pull this right back, this material here. Oh, a couple of them are bolting down. They're still feeding around the cow manure area there. We'll fold that right back and get a good look under here. Oh, you can see a lot of the food's gone, probably three quarters of it. There's a little tiny bit of a funky smell, but not too bad. A lot of the eggshell that I put in this one, I didn't grind it up as much. So you can see a lot of eggshell here. And it does, that material I've noticed does get a bit crusty, but if you look underneath, man, we have lots of worms under here and they're going hard on I'm just going to have to use my fingers. They're hot, they're, they're diving down. Um, but they're here, and look, you can see them. They're all feeding in that zone. Probably a good idea to mix it up. It was starting to get a little bit smell, a tiny little bit of smell there. Not much. But who knows, it could be from underneath the avocado as well. And they did finally get underneath the avocado. There we go, look. So, nice big worm ball there. Putting an action for you guys to see. They're all trying to scoot down the... And we'll bring them all up to the top. And see what we can find here. So it just took them a bit longer to get to that food inside the avocado. But look, they did eat like that food that we had from the feeding zone. They obviously were like really down here and just going hard. So really happy about that. And look, these are big, these are nice big fat composties. Lots of reds, some blues in here, some tigers. 
What I'm noticing is a real mix of worms in here, which is good. That's what I wanted. I'm after those ones that hang in the top surface, so the horizontal feeders. And they look pretty healthy to me. Pretty happy with that. Good worm boiling action. I'd say that they will start laying their cocoons in here, but I'm going to have to change this bedding, I've realised, because the fact is, is that this is not the best bedding to collect cocoons from and to collect castings from, really, for a tray, from my point of view. So feeding and breeding and happy worms. Let's have a look through the rest of the farm down this far end here and see where they are. So we'll have a look at the bedding now and just I'll get my hands in here. We'll just have a look around. You can see there's lots of like big chunky bits to this egg carton cardboard. Now that's really great for them to lay cocoons on and go in between and all that type of stuff in a bigger farm. But I really think in this smaller system it needs to be really ripped up a lot more and be a lot finer. It's just a bit too sort of big and chunky in here and so I really need to go through this and sort of sift this whole farm again uh, before I uh, feed it I believe so you can see that they are through like there's still some fiber left like from the cocoa peat the recycled cocoa peat and stuff so there's so much food in here still I could really just leave them to feed on that and not feed them anymore like they could live for months in here really as long as I kept it moist and sort of like the right temperature and they would lay cocoons and do their thing and get used to this feeding source um, but I think what I need to do really is to go through and make another video so I need to go through and sort of like change this bedding fix this up I'm going to use the same bedding but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you how I'm going to fix it up and because they're used to the food and everything in here and the bacteria and everything's in here for them that they like and the food source that they enjoy. And then we'll take it to the next level and, yeah, keep on tray farming. All right, so keep an eye on the vlogs. Plenty more coming up for you real soon. Give us a big thumbs up if you dig it and we'll see you at the next video real soon. But for now, more coming up on the way, guys. We're going to build a new bedding and give them another feed. Ciao for now.